The Ouya officially went to the great big tech dump in the sky in June 2019, when new owner Razer shut down the online store, making the digital-only console little more than a paperweight. Despite earning a then-record-setting $8.5 million on Kickstarter in 2012, the micro console was pretty much dead on arrival. The key word there is micro console, not because it's a made-up term that seems silly in hindsight, but because while the unit itself is kaputz, its controller lives on. Since it uses standard Bluetooth, it can still be used on PCs, tablets, phones, and even the PS5 to this day. I'm guessing you probably don't own both an Ouya controller and a PS5, so you have no way of telling that I'm lying. But who would actually use one of these controllers today? Well, if you bought an off-brand, cheap third-party controller on Amazon or eBay in the last few years, that might be you. It seems that someone, somewhere, somehow have gotten their hands on the schematics and molds for the original Ouya controller and are now cranking these bad boys out with slightly altered designs as third-party controllers for the Nintendo Switch and PC. What is it about the Ouya controller that makes everyone and their dogs, vets, dentists, neighbors, cousin, half-step, sister-in-laws, gardener, twice removed want to make these knockoffs? And is it even legal? And most importantly, are these controllers actually any good? Let's find out. Having bought an Ouya when it first came out and selling it after only two months, I can definitively say that the Ouya's controller is one of the worst I've ever used. But to refresh myself on why, I went out and bought one that was in surprisingly great condition. It even had the original plastic on it. The controller is modeled after the Xbox 360's... I need to think of another word for controller, otherwise this video is going to get very repetitive. Uh, Taskmistress. It's modeled after the 360's Taskmistress. The analog sticks are asymmetric, it uses standard AA batteries rather than an internal lithium-ion one, and its D-pad is garbage. That's where the similarities end, though. Unlike the 360's Straw Boss, the analog sticks are flat rather than concave, the triggers are also flat and not shaped like well, triggers, and there's no start or back buttons. Instead, since the Ouya played so many mobile games, the middle is reserved for a PS4-esque touch panel. That means that if you're going to use this on PC, you're going to have to stay close to your keyboard to pause, or look at a map, or whatever kids use start and select buttons for these days. All around, the Ouya controller is pretty terrible feeling. I like the general shape of it, it fits into my hands better than any Xbox or PlayStation controller I've ever used, but it's let down by, well, everything else. For starters, the batteries go into these panels on the front. Trying to pop them off is virtually impossible without some kind of prying tool. They don't fit back on the controller well either, leaving a noticeable channel between the plate and the back that digs into your palms. Worst of all, the buttons are all very... squidgy. There are no micro switches, it's all just bits of rubber pushing against each other. The triggers especially feel awful. There's no definitive press with them. You have to push down quite far before anything registers. You can actually hear the plastic of the button rubbing up against the inside of the controller housing whenever you press it in, too. And the whole thing feels like it's just going to shatter if you glance at it too hard. So this begs the question, why would anyone want to copy this controller? And not just anyone, everyone. There are dozens of controllers online that clearly rip off the general shape and design of the Ouya controller, all claiming to be for the Nintendo Switch to capitalize on that bandwagon. I picked up these two controllers for myself because my Ouya video from a few years ago was very popular and made me lots of money, so I'm hoping I can... Um... I picked up these two controllers for myself to see if they were any good, but also because I wanted to see if they were any different from the Ouya controller and from each other. As you can tell, they are very similar to one another, and also the Ouya controller for a little side-by-side -side comparison here. My guess is that these two knockoff controllers are basically identical with different logos, or in the case of this one, no logo at all. Um, but as you can see, overall, they're pretty much identical, save for a few small differences.
They all have the exact same shape, same size, same layouts, same lights on the top, and all of it. There are some key differences, though. Both knockoff controllers drop the touchpad for an array of extra buttons. We have plus and minus, leaning into the switch association, a home button, and two interesting extras. One is a dedicated screenshot button, and one is a turbo button. Also up top there's a charging port and a reset button. I'm going to test both of these controllers on PC, because I'm the last human on Earth who doesn't yet own a Nintendo Switch. Sorry. Annoyingly, they don't use Bluetooth, so if you do get them for PC gaming, you're going to have to keep them plugged in like it's 1999 all over again. First we'll go with the unlogoed variant, the Sanjoiko Gamepad Wireless for Switch. Nice name. As you can see, they're leaning on the Switch thing hard with the blue and red color plates, the same plates that come off on the Ouya controller that are now fixed to the unit because both of these knockoff controllers use internal rechargeable batteries instead of double A's. Next is the Ralphie Wireless Gamepad for Switch. Are you noticing a pattern here? This one got a big marketing push a couple of years ago with a ton of articles and YouTube videos about it. It also comes in blue and red, but I opted for blue and yellow for the sake of variety. The Sanjoiko controller was $20 and the Ralphie was about $22, not including shipping. The Ralphie comes in this nice box, whereas the Sanjoiko came in a plain white one. Both come with a USB-C charging cable and almost identical instruction manuals. Another clue as to the origin of these bad boys. Right away, the difference in quality with the knockoffs and the original is like night and day. You'd think these knockoffs would be worse than the genuine article, but it's it's actually the opposite. The Sanjoiko and the Ralphie both have a significantly higher build quality than the Ouya controller. The buttons in the D-pad are all micro-switched, the squidgy triggers are now much firmer and responsive, the annoying gap in the sides is gone, and they generally feel more durable than the Ouya one. The only downside is that they're both a little lighter than the Ouya controller, but they're not so light that they feel like they're going to float away. To get a good sense of these controllers, I played multiple games with all three of them from a variety of genres. At first, the Ralphie and Sanjoiko felt really good. The buttons were responsive, the clickiness was enjoyable, and they felt really good in the hands. The turbo button works well on both of them, though I couldn't get the screenshot button to work. That might only work on the Switch or certain games, I'm not sure. After spending about two weeks playing with both of these controllers, it became clear they were obviously the same thing. The colors and the branding are the only differences. Growing up during the oppressive reign of Mad Cat's crap controllers, I was more than ready to recommend these as solid options for the Switch, at least. Not having to shell out $70 for a pro controller when you could get the same function from a damn good controller for just 20 bucks, it's a no-brainer. But the more I played with both of them, the more some issues that at first I thought were minor became larger problems. For one thing, using these on PC with a wire sucks. I know that sounds like a first world problem, but I've become so spoiled by wireless controllers that having to hunch next to my computer and work around a cord just isn't fun. It would be especially annoying for anyone using a couch setup if their PC was really far away, because the cable that comes with these is only about two feet long. Also, since both of these are designed as Switch controllers, A, B, X, and Y are flipped from where they are on a 360 joypad. Your PC is going to recognize this as a generic input device, and the 360 layout is considered default, so all the button prompts and games are the opposite of what's represented on the physical buttons. You get used to it after a while, but it's really annoying at first, especially if you're like me and come from the land of triangles, squares, crosses, and circles. The biggest headache though, and what ultimately killed these controllers for me, was the dead zone on the analog sticks. Dead zone refers to the amount of travel on a stick before it registers an input. A low dead zone means the stick requires less force to register a response, whereas a high dead zone means you have to press the stick further before anything happens. The dead zone on these controllers are insanely high. You have to go quite far before these sticks register that you've moved them. That's a problem because with analog sticks, how much pressure you put on them translates to how quickly either your character moves with the left stick, or how quickly the camera rotates with the right, stuff like that. The space between 0 and 100 is minuscule with both the Ralphie and Sanjoiko. In my tests, sneaking in Fallout 4, aiming my bow in Genshin Impact, and subtle turning in Horizon Chase Turbo were all Herculean tasks. You can see in this footage of Genshin Impact the difficulty in just trying to move at a walking pace. And look at this aiming! I grew up a console gamer, I don't suck with a controller this hard normally, honest. I had to resort to moving my character left and right to aim. 
It's that reason alone that I just can't recommend either of these controllers, as this wire flaps around and annoys me. The Dead Zone makes them virtually unusable, and combined with the fact that you need these wires in the first place, makes them really unsuitable for PC use. If you're only playing 2D games, I guess, on PC, and you don't mind having the wire, and maybe you get a longer one, it's okay, I guess, but that is a lot of qualifiers. And while the Ouya controller may be nicer in the fact that it's fully wireless, it doesn't have a start and select button, making it just completely useless if you're not sitting right next to your PC. Not to mention the fact that it doesn't work with consoles anyway. This is making a rattling noise. I can't, I don't know if you can hear that, but something inside is rattling around. Honestly though, that's only half the reason why I bought these controllers, as this one flaps around still. I, I also want to know why there are so many of these controllers in the first place. I can't say for sure how this happened, but my guess is that either Ouya or Razer licensed off the schematics for the controller to multiple companies, and then other companies just started ripping it off, or maybe when Razer discontinued the Ouya, the controller design went into the public domain or something like that, I don't know. Take Sinjoiko, for example, the makers of the unbranded blue and red controller. They have no website of their own. In fact, I can't find any information about this company at all other than store pages on Amazon and listings on eBay and even Newegg and Walmart. Despite not having a website, I found that the website is registered to someone in Shanghai, China back in 2006, last updated in 2018. Ralphie also doesn't have a website, but is registered to someone in Germany who just updated something in late 2020. They've got a second controller they're selling online that looks like a 360 controller, and very similar to another controller Sunjoico are selling. Not to mention a whole bunch of other random junk they're selling under the name on Amazon. I looked up as many of these companies as I could find. JSYW, Stoga, Voye, GameSir, Zoe Tree, Kutime, Sefa Topher, and Tainactway, and they pretty much all seem to be the same story. They may not be selling Ouya like controllers, but they're all selling some kind of wireless controller that's a clone of the 360, the PS3, PS4, or Switch ones, and they're all identical. Surely there's no way these random companies with no website or legal company filings got permission to make these, right? I was originally going to do this whole deep dive into knockoff products online and why they're so prevalent and why online retailers don't seem to care, but really that just went on far too long and has nothing to do with what this channel or even what this video is about. I mean, really, who cares? Knockoff products have always and will always be part of retail and one single crappy video that no one's going to watch is going to do anything about that. Just do your research and do it well before you buy any kind of cheap products like this online. Now, are the Ralphie and Sanjoico controllers cheap pieces of crap that are going to break and leave shards of plastic in your eyeballs? No, but they're not exactly very good controllers either. Fitting, considering what they're based on. I'm not sure how to end this video, so I'm going to prop this right here, and and then I'm going to... Um...